become friends with your demons because from there, then you have power over them because they don't have power over you anymore. <laughs> Happy Scorpio solar eclipse. Mwahahaha. So first off, before we begin, you're going to survive this, okay? How was that? You are going to survive this because you are a fucking badass. Okay, you do not want to miss the first mother effing part of this video, okay? You just don't, like, do not just jump straight to your sign because you are missing out on a fuck ton if you do. So I warned you, the beginning of this video is fire, so you don't want to miss it. <laughs> So, we have a solar eclipse in Scorpio happening on October 24th or 25th, depending on where you are in the world. Basically, really fucking soon. And this is a big deal because this is a solar eclipse, so this is going to ripple through our lives for the next six months. It is just now ending the last six month eclipse cycle that we just got out of or that we are ending now that happened in May 2022 this year year and that's where we're going to start so first off i want to tell you the theme of this solar eclipse is new karma second off i want to tell you that in may 2022 we ended with the last lunar eclipse in scorpio like mid-may 2022 which literally was dark as fuck <laughs> let's back up before that for the previous couple months before that we had started seeing what our dreams were what our dream lives were what we actually wanted to create we started getting a vision for where we wanted to go a path that felt more fulfilling that felt more stable that felt more beautiful that felt more freaking pleasurable we like really started to see this direction of like a slower more stable more secure more beautiful more pleasurable more fulfilling life what we wanted to actually do in the world what our desires were and then in may 2022 that all flipped on its head with the scorpio lunar eclipse that we had then back in the beginning of this year we were really seeing what we really desired but that Scorpio lunar eclipse flipped things on its head and it started showing us over the last six months that there was some past shit that needed to be cleaned up, some dark, scary, weird, old shit that we needed to freaking get a hold on, right? Like we can't move forward with this life that we wanna create, this beautiful, pleasurable, creative, like vibey <laughs> life that we want to create with all of this old karma, with all of this shit lingering from the past, with all of this pain that we're still attached to, with all of this resentment we're still attached to, being driven by lack and insecurity that we were attached to. We went through all of this shit the last six months to really realize that we are not that person anymore, that we don't have to be attached to that stuff anymore, that that's not even us, that all these old fears, all these old attachments are not even us anymore. So the last six months was about releasing these old versions of us that were driven by fear, lack, and insecurity and scarcity. And if you think about it, like when we see in life all the time, there's an, a contraction right before there's an expansion, right? And so the last six months have been like the labor period of a birth, right? Like there's been contractions. We've been like contracting and facing all these old fears, all this old shit that just like doesn't even make sense with who we are or who we desire to be now. And so we've had to face these things because this new version of us, this future version of us that we are stepping into doesn't have time for all these old skeletons in our closet. It doesn't have time for this one time when we were six that we got scared over something and ever since we've had this fear of yada, yada, yada. It doesn't have time for the toxic traits that we were attached to or the, the pain in this old relationship that we were attached to or these like toxic patterns that we keep finding ourselves in or this chaos. Like it doesn't have freaking time for that. The new version of us, the future version of us does not have fucking time for that anymore, right? And so if we want to be that future version of us, we had to release and clean our hands of this old karmic shit that does not make freaking sense anymore. These old shadow behaviors that were holding us back in the first place from the life that we really desire. And so that's what these last six months have been. And Alan Watts has this like beautiful quote. It's something like this, okay? Like don't quote me verbatim here. But <laughs> when you take your first step towards your liberation, you will find that your karmic debts come knocking at your door. And this is the last six 
months, okay? We started to take a step towards our liberation. We started to take that step towards the life that we really desired, something slower, more steady, that felt fulfilling, that literally like felt beautiful to us, something like our dream lives, whatever the case, our dream job, whatever it is for you. And then it was like, wait, how are you gonna do all that with all these old skeletons in your closet? So in the Scorpio Lunar Eclipse video from May this year, which I highly suggest you watch if you want a full circle freaking moment with this video right now. In that freaking video, I talked a lot about about trying to move into a new mansion with taking all of your old trashy moldy shit with you like what is the point in that that's basically what we've been uncovering for these last six freaking months now <laughs> we've been getting rid of the old shit that cannot go with us to this new future of ours, whatever it may be for you. I don't know about you, but I was like flying fucking high as fuck in the beginning of this year. Like I was thriving. I was stepping into my best self. I was stepping into my future. And that Scorpio lunar eclipse came and everything shifted, honestly. Like, and it just became so much about cleaning up the past and facing old fears, facing old things that didn't even feel like me anymore, but were so powerful and so overpowering and just holding me back. And, and I could tell it was like old versions of me and that didn't have a place in my life anymore. And I had to like really move through that this summer to get to where I am now. And so it, it's just insane. So I don't know if you had like a similar story, but it literally is like we've been breaking the chains of our karmic past and of our karmic attachments, our toxic attachments, our old fears. And so now we're at this place where there's like a new karmic beginning happening. And it's like, we are finally breaking the chain. Like the Scorpio lunar eclipse was a start to that earlier this year. It was a start to showing us the chains in the first place, but I wouldn't say that it was breaking them. The whole six months has been breaking the chains. We've had to face these fears and it's led us to where this like pot of dirty water has basically boiled over and there's nothing left in the pot. And so it's been like a clean out of all this dirty shit within our lives, all this shit that, you know, we've had to face all these fears, all of these like old karmic lessons, all of this past stuff that's really come to the surface for us to face because we cannot take that shit with us in the life that we want to create. It can't go with us, right? And so it may have seemed like a lot for a lot of people these last several months of like facing a lot of things and going through a lot of like dark times going through a lot of scary things facing a lot of fears and just drudging up old stuff but like that is what we've needed to face so we can create what we actually desire within our lives so we can create this new reality so we can actually clear this karmic debt and break the chains to where it doesn't have control over us anymore and now we can fill that pot with whatever the fuck we want, right? We can create whatever the fuck we want. And this solar eclipse in Scorpio is coming in to be like, boom, you know, like it's a blank slate, it's a void. So you can fill it with whatever you want, but just know that this is very, very karmic, right? That's the thing. We're still in this very karmic energy. Yes, it's a new beginning and an ending simultaneously where we are breaking old chains, we are moving on from the past, we are letting old shit go, but whatever we start during this time is also very karmic. And so this could be for a lot of people with Mars and Gemini, the ruler of the Scorpio eclipse, a very karmic testy period where you are almost tested on what you learned the last six months. Like, oh, okay, like we just finally cleared out these old behaviors. We just finally cleared out these old patterns, but here, you know, are you gonna do the same thing again or are you gonna do something different, right? Here is a similar situation. You know, you can resort back to your old ways of dealing with it, you can resort back to your shadow traits, your old toxic behaviors, whatever the case may be, or you can do something new. You can do something brand new and start a completely new karmic cycle for yourself right now. It is completely fucking up to you. So to do this, we need to stop trying to fix what's broken, right? The chains are broken. We need to stop trying to fix them so we can still attach to our fear and attach to our pain and, and have the right to be in pain and have the right to, to act a certain way. Like we need to stop fucking doing that, okay? We need to take our power back and we need to do what feels 
right and clean within us. This is a chance to create a whole new karmic cycle for ourselves. And if we keep hanging on to the old shit or trying to do what we always did and hang on to the fear because we're used to it, hang on to the pain because we're used to it, hang on to the toxicity because we're used to it and that's what's comfortable, then we're not going to finally move forward into this life that we really want to create. So this solar eclipse is also coming with major, major, major relationship and financial changes and energy as well. This can be a massive new karmic period starting for relationships. So keep that in mind when I just said, like this is a very karmic time. So whatever you start now will have karma tied to it. Karmic ramifications, right? And that doesn't always have to be bad either. Like it can be actually really amazing, but there are karmic uh, energies involved in any everything right now. So we have to just be weary of that, that whatever we are beginning around this time, if we, if we really truly want to be done with the old, we have to fucking put up or shut up, right? Like we have to walk the talk. We can't just go back to what's easy, go back to what's comfortable and expect anything to change. Major relationship stuff. So you could find that a real massive relationship change occurs for a lot of people. Also huge financial changes and decisions that are coming in with this as well. This is also uh, major endings, major karmic endings that you can find. It's like clearing the slate. It's completely clearing the slate. It's like literally a void is being created and you can fill it with what you want, but just know that whatever you fill it with is karmic. So what I mean by that is like, there is a cause and effect, right? There is cause and effect involved in this. Like whatever you fill it with will ripple in some way, shape or form because this is such a, this is an eclipse. So this is like a big energy. So you don't want to purposely really fill it with things that you're not very sure about or you're not very sure, like if you would want to deal with that for the next however many years or whatever, then don't put it in your pot, right? Like don't start it right now. Like wait until another time, wait until like December or something, right? Like this is a very, very karmic time. You can't get out of this. So another energy that this, you know, Scorpio solar eclipse is going to bring up is the profane and beauty, right? We have beauty in the profane. Like what's beautiful? What, what do we actually want? And we might find beauty in the profane. And so that's why it can be, it can be kind of difficult at times with this eclipse because we may be drawn or seduced by old behaviors, old attachments, etc., and the past. And so we have to really remember this blank slate happening, you know, like, do we really want to go back to this old thing? Do we really want to start doing this, all these old behaviors or get back into these old toxic shadow traits or whatever the case may be. Another really big thing happening with this eclipse that was also going on with the last eclipse with the Scorpio lunar eclipse is that we have Mars and Neptune involved and Mars and Neptune were involved last time. Mars was actually conjunct Neptune and this time we have Mars squaring Neptune. We have this energy between logic versus trust, right? Where do we need to surrender and trust versus where do we need to be more logical, be more rational, you know, and, and communicate how we really feel. Right now it can be kind of difficult because we like we don't have a clear vision for our plans or a clear path forward for our plans. So it can feel like like we're not having all the answers, like the answers aren't all clear just yet, or the answers that we do have may not be the same within the next few months. They may change because Neptune's involved and Neptune can make things very foggy and confusing. The path can feel kind of hazy right now and it can feel like, well, I'm keeping all this hope, I'm keeping all this trust, but I don't see you know, the answers or I, I still don't see something paying off. And that's because there is a certain level of trust that we need here and, and things will become clear as time goes on. So basically this solar eclipse is coming in as the beginning of us liberating ourselves from our past. And this story is going to continue as we get to the lunar eclipse in Taurus two weeks from this solar eclipse. So we are liberating ourselves from the darkness within us and within our lives. We are liberating ourselves from these karmic change, these uh, karmic situations. We're seeing where we need to have higher fucking standards for ourselves. We're seeing where we're powerless and where we also need to step into our power, right? Where we need to be the badass that can deal with this, where we're not seeing our power. This is really honestly a beautiful transformation in my opinion. Like, yes, it can come with some shadows. It can come with some fear, etc. But that's what this is about. It's about our relationship to our shadows, our relationship to our fears our relationship to our insecurities, our relationship to lack. 
Because like I said, this can bring up a lot of money stuff, a lot of financial stuff. This is very much about, you know, finding beauty in the darkness and in the edgier areas of life and harmonizing those edgier areas. Like if we are in resistance with our fears, if we are in resistance with these scarier areas of life where we feel powerless or where we feel insecure, if we feel lack, whatever, if we're in resistance to that, then we're feeding it because whatever you fight, you feed. And so this eclipse is like harmonizing that. It's like, stop resisting it, become friends with your demons basically, because from there, then you have power over them because they don't have power over you anymore. Then you can go on your merry way and create the life that you fucking want, right? Like that is what this is about. So we were shown a new way of moving forward in May, of moving through life, of, you know, a, a new path a new desire, a new dream, whatever that we wanted to create back earlier this year. And so this is bringing this back up. We can still have that. You know, it is about going slower, focusing on what's stable, focusing on what brings us more pleasure, what brings us more fulfillment, right? What feels good. That's coming back around now, but it's like we've had to deal with all these fears first. We've had to deal with all of the shit clogging us and holding us back from living the life that we actually want to live. Now, another thing is Jupiter is going to retrograde back into Pisces on October 28th, I believe. This is a big deal because Jupiter was in Pisces the beginning of this year while the nodes shifted into Taurus and Scorpio when we started seeing our dreams, when we started seeing the lives that we wanted to create. And so this was really helping with that. You know, Jupiter and Pisces was showing us our dreams. It was showing us what we were, like what our potential was, what we were capable of. And so Jupiter retrograding back to finish that is like, hey, remember this, don't give up on this. Like your dreams are not too big. Your mind is just too narrow. Like I always say, you just can't see the fucking potential. You just can't see the fucking possibility from where you're at right now, but you will, right? You just have to keep fucking going because from you continuing to move, you eventually get to the place where you can see, oh, they're right there, right? But you can't see it from where you're at right now, right? And so this is like a level of faith. This is bringing in a level of trust right? A level of belief, not only in yourself, but in something greater than you right now. And so this is really what I have to say about this Scorpio solar eclipse. It's a lot. I know you can come back and watch this anytime. Let me know if you made it this far. Let me know if you just watched the whole first part of this video, because if you did, you are a badass, my friend. I salute you. I thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let me know down below. I think that this eclipse is going to be very, very healing in a lot of ways. Um, I know a lot of people, uh, I'm, I may be the only one saying that, honestly. I feel like a lot of people are just like, oh my god, a Scorpio eclipse. But like, I personally like have a really big, beautiful, good, and powerful feeling about this eclipse. The Taurus lunar eclipse, I'm not so not so sure about, but I, I don't feel too bad about that one either, honestly. I feel like that one will be a lot more like liberation and breaking free and all of that, whereas this one is like, like a reset. It's like starting a new cycle where, you know, we are clearing old karmic baggage and now we get to have more power and say so in what we want in terms of like what we want entangled with us in terms of karmically, right? Because we had to let go of that past old shit because that past old shit was from past versions of us, but we're still carrying it around with us. You know, that fear that we had that got generated in sixth grade because of some event that happened. And it's like, that's not who we are anymore. <laughs> we're not scared of that anymore. So why do I still feel this fear around certain situations? You know, like, it's like we had to shed these old versions of us, right? And that is really what this eclipse is about in so many ways. I've been getting so much, so many downloads about this. And I wanted to share them all in this video. And Mars is gonna go retrograde on October 30th as well. And Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. Mars is the ruler of this eclipse. So it's going to go retrograde in Gemini. And so this is going to be a massive like reversal and going back through and just really processing like the last few months. And I think really helping us logically make sense of all of it because things have not quite all the way been clear since May this year, right? And so, and as things start moving forward again by the end of this year and beginning of next year things will really really start to add up and so anyways let me know down below what you think if you stayed this whole way and uh we are gonna go ahead and get to your rising sign your rising sign will resonate most as always i love you guys happy scorpio solar eclipse Alrighty, scorpio this solar eclipse is obviously happening in your sign so if you're a scorpio rising <laughs> 
you will survive. It is going to be okay. This is literally a new turning point for you in your life. It is a clearing out of the old, a complete clearing out of old karma, old chains that have held you back, that have felt restrictive, that have really had you, you know, feeling very attached to your pain as a part of who you are and who your identity is and, and who, how you view your life, the filter in which you view your life from, you know, and how you behave and certain shadow traits, old behaviors, things like that, you know, certain psychological effects that it may have even kind of had on you, you know, and so this solar eclipse and your sign is really coming up to say like, hey, you know, it's time to wipe the slate clean. It's time to basically make friends with your demons. That way they have no power over you anymore and move forward from there. Get back, like step back into your power. And so this could be a very, very healing time for you. If you have anything at the very beginning degrees of Scorpio, anywhere from zero to, uh, I would say, you know, maybe even like 10 degrees of Scorpio, then this could definitely, you could def you're definitely going to be feeling this the most because that's where, it, you know, the eclipse is happening, like right around two degrees Scorpio. And so it's really going to be hitting your, whatever you have there, whether it's your rising sign or personal planets, etc. Um, this eclipse is also ruled by Mars, your chart ruler, and Mars is in your eighth house of Gemini. And so this is also a big deal. So it's also going to bring up, you know, where you have been attached to certain financial things or energetic exchanges or shared resources, you know, that could somehow be in the mix as well, where maybe you feel trapped into certain obligations or whatever that you've been dealing with like the last six months and that are unraveling now. And, you know, you are, maybe you've based your own level of value on those things in some way, or you've based your own self-esteem on finances or, you know, certain arrangements or financial arrangements arrangements with other people. So that could also be something that comes up as well. But this is really definitely clearing out so, 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 so much for you. So you can move forward with more of a sense of who you are and feel better about who you are and where you can start this new, very karmic blank slate. You know, like this is new karma that you're starting to kind of build here while you're releasing old karma. So remember that, you know, if you didn't watch the beginning of this video, I would definitely go back and watch that because it will explain a lot more and you will relate to so much of it being a Scorpio rising. So definitely go back and watch that. So moving on to Sagittarius, Sagittarius, this eclipse is happening for you in your 12th house of things that are more hidden, you know, releasing, letting go, sleep, the subconscious, you know, things that happen oftentimes behind the scenes, you know, secrets, old, you know, maybe hidden enemies, like things like this can come up at this time. So this is really kind of clearing out a lot of old self-sabotaging behaviors, old fears, old things that just need to be let go of. I mean, this really is like a breaking the chain moment for you, Sag, where it's like you're seeing, you've been seeing the last six months how these subconscious habits, these subconscious patterns, these toxic cycles have really been playing such a huge role in your life. And you've really had to maybe face some more difficult things, you know? You've like quite literally been cleaning out the skeletons in your closet, you know? You've quite literally been seeing what's hidden and what's going on below the surface and how that affects your day-to-day life, your day-to-day -day lifestyle, your day-to-day -day reality, you know, the, the life that you want to create, the work that you do, you know, etc. And so this solar eclipse is kind of like a, a new beginning that is really asking you to kind of harmonize with these things, to let these things go, to release these blockages, to surrender, to really face these old behaviors and, and be able to let them go to move on, you know? And so it really is like this void, this new beginning that's happening in terms of what you, what patterns that you want to start now. And those will be karmic patterns, you know, but you get to have more of a power, more of a say so, and you know, in them, right? And so also the solar eclipse is ruled by Mars, which is in your seventh house of relationships, 
and uh, other people. And so this can definitely be a time as well where that is coming up in some way. You know, maybe you're releasing uh, certain toxic traits, certain self-sabotaging patterns with a relationship. Maybe you're releasing certain subconscious attachments in terms of relationships in some way, or maybe your partner is, you know, there's definitely, you know, this kind of hidden subconscious healing behind the scenes stuff happening and it could be coming up in your relationships as well so let me know down below if that resonates sag if you didn't watch the first part of this video you are missing out because you would definitely relate to it so moving on to capricorn so for capricorn risings this solar eclipse is happening in your 11th house of friends and social circles groups you know any kind of social situations that you belong to communities collaborations things like this. And so this, uh, also your, your aspirations in the world and what you receive from others in a lot of ways. And so this solar eclipse is starting a, a massive new beginning here. You know, honestly, this isn't, this may not be as difficult for you if you're a Capricorn rising. Not that I really think this solar eclipse is going to necessarily be difficult. I think it's going to be very powerful and profound and um, insightful. But I think that if you're a Capricorn rising, it's mainly, you know, bringing up terms or themes of power and powerlessness within friends and social interactions and with how you feel about the world and your world views and you know uh, your views in terms of your social life and you know uh, self-sabotaging behaviors there or fears there that come up right and so this is really starting this new chapter for you and somehow this could tie in with mars and your sixth house of work health day-to-day -day routines you know i really think if you're a capricorn rising this is about owning your power um, and owning your fears and owning those more shadow traits of you in maybe a public way or maybe a social way or maybe in terms of work, you know, like, I don't know, like, especially if you are like, let's say like a YouTuber or something like just because that's what I do. So it's the easiest example, but this would be like, you know, getting vulnerable and like, you know, saying things that other people maybe wouldn't talk about, you know what I mean? And like, and a, like an embracing your quote unquote weaknesses and making them your fucking strengths, right? Owning your power, stepping into your power and like uh, being the one that leads, right? And I think that that could really be beneficial to you. But even if you're not a YouTuber, apply it how it resonates. Let me know down below Capricorn if this resonated. If you missed the beginning of this video, you're missing out a lot. So go back and watch it. I hope you guys have an amazing solar eclipse and we are going to move on to Aquarius. So Aquarius, the solar eclipse is happening in your 10th house of your relationship, your career, your professional life, where you're headed, the direction of your life, your future, your goals, the things that you want to accomplish, the legacy that you want to leave behind, power dynamics as well, authority figures, things like this. So you could be seeing these themes start to slowly unfold around the solar eclipse and over the next few weeks as we get into Scorpio season as well. And really over the next six months, I mean, this is a six month fucking cycle here. So, um, but this is really bringing up like a blank slate, a massive new karmic beginning in terms of your career, your professional life, what you want in terms of your worldly achievements, what you want in terms of goals, what you want in the long term, right? And so um, this is really like showing you where you've been attached maybe to old karmic cycles uh, or old power dynamics or old self-sabotaging behaviors or old pain, old fears surrounding your career and your life goals, your, your bigger life achievements, right? And so this can be like a letting go of those things in order to transform into what you really want in order, and also in order to live a life that feels more authentic and vulnerable and, um, you know, real to you, right? And so this could also be affecting with Mars in your fifth, your passions, your hobbies, the things that you find joy and pleasure in, your dating life, you know, and uh, possibly children, you know, somehow could tie into this or love, romance, sexuality as well. This could very much be about, you know, owning your power and like a very passionate uh, way in some way, you know, so let me know down below Aquarius if that resonated with you I'd love to hear your feedback as always if you missed the beginning of this video Definitely go back and watch it because it's powerful and you would get a lot from it So moving on to Pisces. So for Pisces this solar eclipse is happening in your ninth house of education travels your belief systems your worldviews 
higher education, you know, uh, things like that, really getting out of your comfort zone. And so over the last, you know, six months, you've likely really seen a lot going on in this area. You've likely been really seeing your fears in terms of the world at large, in terms of your worldviews, in terms of, you know, your belief systems about the world, whether political, religious, etc. You know, you've likely been really seeing a lot of your attachments to certain old self-defeating or chaotic, uh, you know, maybe philosophies or theories or belief systems, etc. And so this solar eclipse in Scorpio coming in is really showing you or is really kind of uh, bringing this new karmic beginning happening, this new massive karmic blank slate that's uh, forming here that is really very much about making peace with these old things that no longer serve you, right? And on top of that, this could also be uh, somehow having to do with Mars in your fourth house since Mars rules this eclipse. So, and Mars is in your fourth house in Gemini. So this could be bringing in the topic of home, family, and you know your vision for home and family and what's going on in your personal life with home and family as well. And maybe facing some things regarding that, you know, or maybe considering different options regarding that in some way or coming to different insights regarding that in some way. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Pisces. Let me know down below if this resonated. If you missed the very first part of this video, go back and check it out because you definitely don't want to miss out on that. It was very, very powerful and everyone I think will relate to it. So moving on to Aries. Aries, this solar eclipse is happening in your eighth house and it is a big deal because it is your fellow Mars ruled sign. So Scorpio is also ruled by Mars. You both are ruled by Mars and have Mars as your chart ruler if you're an Aries rising or Scorpio rising and Mars is in Gemini. And so you have this, you know, mixed bag of energy coming up here where you have this solar eclipse, this massive new karmic beginning and ending happening in terms of your finances, your investments, business, you know, power dynamics, psychological issues, Issues, you know, uh, a releasing and a letting go of old fears and old things that no longer serve you that are holding you back, you know, a lack mentality as well, a big time for Aries risings with Mars in the third and your third house of your, your mental realm and communication, right? And so this really is like a, a time where it's like a massive blank slate starting here where you can really flush out and purge this old, these old, you know, mentalities of lack, these old mentalities of scarcity, or, you know, these old self-sabotaging uh, thoughts or beliefs or, you know, whatever the case may be, you know, you can, you can really purge a lot during these times and move forward in a very transformative way. So this can be a very transformative full moon, or I'm sorry, new moon solar eclipse for Aries. And also, you know, because it's your fellow Mars ruled sign, and this can also somehow tie back into your identity and how you see yourself as well, since you're an Aries rising. So let me know down below, Aries, if that resonated. Go back and watch the beginning of this video if you haven't already, because it's very powerful and you would get a lot from it and relate to it. So Taurus rising. So for Taurus risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your seventh house of relationships and other people. So this is a big, big, big karmic new beginning, a big karmic bang happening right here in your relationship sector uh, to do with other people, your close relationships, your marriage, your partnerships, etc. So those are definitely going to be a lot of the things you see coming up with this and unfolding over the next six months. Also, with Venus here, which rules your sign, this is definitely about relationships. You know, Venus is right in the mix of this eclipse. And so this is very much like possibly, you know, kind of almost like coming to peace with certain uh, behaviors are old self-defeating, self-sabotaging, chaotic, toxic behaviors that have been really uh, haunting you in terms of relationships, in terms of your your close situational, uh, your close situations in terms of other people, your close connections. And so this is a time where you can really like make peace with those so they don't have power over you anymore and kind of break that karmic chain and start a new pattern, start new habits and relationships and let go of the old, let go of the, the chaos or the insecurity or whatever, or you can choose to continue to attach to those things, continue to attach to chaos and relationships. And, you know, uh, it, it may not go very well, you know, like, so it's kind of up to you though. Like, do you want to start this massive new beginning and, and have a clean slate? Or do you want to hold on to what's always been attracted to you or attractive to you or what's always kind of seduced you or, you know, the, these old 
patterns that no longer have been working for you. You know, it's really up to you. These old karmic chains, you can either break them or keep hanging on to them, you know, is kind of the energy here. And this can somehow go into also your finances, your priorities, what's important to you, what you value, you know, what you put a lot of value and stock into and uh, also your income in some way, you know, so this could definitely bring that topic into this as well. So let me know down below, Taurus, if that resonates and what ends up happening for you for this solar eclipse. I'd love to hear your feedback as always. And if you missed the first part of this video, you definitely want to go back and catch that because a lot was uh, said and it was pretty powerful. So you would get a lot out of it. So Moving on to Gemini, this solar eclipse for you, Gemini, is happening in your sixth house of health, work, and your day-to-day -day routines. And so this solar eclipse is really, really bringing up a massive new karmic change in those areas of your life, right? Where do you have these toxic, chaotic, self-defeating attachments in terms of your work life? You know, over the last six months, you've likely been really reviewing your your habits and, and you know, how these habits and uh, work routines and health routines, etc., bring a certain level of chaos or instability or lack or fear or whatever into your life. You know, where do you have these kind of toxic habits? And this solar eclipse is really like, okay, here's a blank slate. Here's a, a chance to like really release some of these things or let go uh, of some of these things and start anew. Here's a chance to really see what's holding you back in this area of your life and of improving yourself, you know? but um and how it's affecting you right because mars the ruler of this eclipse is in your first house it's in your sign so it's like affecting your identity affecting your personality affecting your own vitality in some way right and so this is the time of taking your power back taking the fucking lead you know maybe you know stop letting your circumstances or whatever the hell uh have power over you you know and like really step up and get into your power and um, and you can start a massive new karmic you know, karmic cycle here. This can literally be breaking the chains of something that's felt like it's trapped you, you know, or that's felt like a, a habit that you just can't freaking kick. You know, this could be that time where you freaking do that, you know? And so it's uh, a really big deal. <laughs> so let me know down below if this resonates with you, Gemini. I'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, and if you didn't uh, watch the first part of this video, make sure to go back and do that because it was really powerful and really important. So already Cancer Risings, this solar eclipse is happening in your fifth house of your love life, what you love, who you love, you know, the things that really uh, set your heart on fire, the things that really feel good, that bring you joy, children, fertility, sexuality, you know, the things that you're passionate about, the things that you really love to do, how you have fun, you know, the things that you like to do for fun, the things that make you feel youthful and, and joyful, you know, and uh, also the ruler of this eclipse is in your 12th house of things that are hidden, endings, releasing, you know, mental health, self self-sabotaging and so uh, our subconscious you know and so these are the themes that you could really see combined for this solar eclipse so a few ways that this could play out like you know maybe you're seeing some you know old sexual fears old dating fears old fears surrounding love uh, old toxic patterns in terms of partying or having too much fun or um, you know getting a little bit too much out of toxic or chaotic things toxic or chaotic situations or events like really getting a little bit too uh too involved in those kinds of things to where maybe they are they end up psychologically uh affecting you or maybe they have some kind of hidden uh, effect on you or on your habits in some way, you know? And so this could definitely be a time where you're releasing certain toxic traits, releasing certain fears. This is a massive new karmic cycle happening here with, you know, uh, your love life, with romance, dating, what you love to do, you know, like your, any affairs evolving, uh, involving the heart, children, you know, things like that, what you like to do for fun. So it's kind of like resetting the karmic cycle here and you can either go with it and start something completely new or you can hold on to the old, you know, you can break the chains of uh, the past and what's been holding you back and, you know, maybe do like maybe the last six months, there's been a lot of inner child work that's come up, a lot of things that you've had to address that really hold you back from love or have kept you uh, guarded around love, you know, or something like that, right? 
So that is what I'm seeing for you, Cancer. Let me know down below if this resonates as always. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. And uh, if you didn't watch the first part of this video, go back and do that because you are missing out majorly. You're going to move on to Leo. So my fellow Leo risings, this Scorpio solar eclipse is happening in our fourth house of home, family, our personal lives, what goes on in our personal lives, our living arrangements, our living situations, and our past, our childhood, our parents, you know, it's a very karmic space for a very karmic event. So karma, karma, karma all over this one for Leo Risings. This is definitely bringing up what's been going on in our personal lives, things that we may like to keep hidden, things that we may, you know, that we may be emotionally attached to or that we have fear-based reactions around that, you know, things that we've kind of neglected or that have really been in our closets, like skeletons in our closets that have came up over the last six months of this year since May 2022 that we've had to face like old fears surrounding family, surrounding home, surrounding stability, surrounding security, surrounding, um, you know, having like a foundation for us to land on, you know, and also things from our past that we like to keep private, you know, this is like a very private and personal place. So it's really kind of like, hey, uh, here's all your skeletons in the closet. Are you going to finally look at them or what, you know? And so we've been really having to face a lot of, lot of old stuff, a lot of past stuff coming back up that we thought that we maybe had moved through a lot of old versions of us, a lot of childhood stuff, you know, a lot of things that we've had to now, you know, face in order for us to create the life that we really want, you know, and if you didn't watch the beginning of this video, you know, go do because it's from my perspective as a Leo rising. And if you're a Leo rising, you're likely going to relate to that first part of the video too. So just saying, but we have been really wanting to create this dream life, this life that we will love this life that brings more stability, uh, more security, that is beautiful, that brings us more pleasure, that's more fulfilling, that's more valuable, right? But we've had all of this, you know, chaotic, you know, scary, old, uh, private, personal stuff that is coming up for us to really deal with, you know, some of these old fears or fear surrounding family, fear surrounding our personal life, fear surrounding things from the past that we've tried to maybe forget about or, you know, psychological stuff, you know, and so it's really bringing these types of things up, but it's a, this particular solar eclipse, it's like we, it's already brought those things up. Like we've already been facing those things. So this particular solar eclipse is like, Hey, okay, here's a new karmic karmic slate happening. It's like a blank slate that's happening, a void that we get to choose and fill with what we want. You know, it's like we've had to really harmonize with these demons from the past and, you know, like really uh, do that so they don't have power over us anymore. Right. And that's how we can move forward. If we can <clears throat> see the beauty in it and not make it mean something about who we are as people, because this eclipse will square Leo if you're, uh, you know, Leo rising. And so it, it's been very much about not making it mean something about who we are as a person or letting it affect our, our own identity and sense of self. And so also uh, Mars is the ruler of this eclipse and Mars for us is in Gemini in the 11th house. So this can also bring up friends and social groups and social situations, things from the past coming up there that need to be communicated. And we can find that we actually have a lot of uh, a lot of luck with communicating during this time, you know, we can find that we really can uh, find a way to resolve certain conflicts that do arise at this time. So do keep that in mind as well. So that is what I'm seeing for Leo Risings. Let me know down below if this resonated, Leo. As always, I'd love to hear your feedback. We are moving on to the sign of Virgo. So if you are a Virgo Rising, this solar eclipse is happening in your third house of communication, your day-to-day -day activities, your day-to-day -day environment, the people, places, and things that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Collaboration can also be a very creative house. It can also be a very social house, you know, events that you go to, uh, you know, things like that, how you think and how you speak on a day-to-day -day basis, short trips, travels, etc. And so, you know, this isn't as crazy for Virgo Risings for that reason, because it is your third house and the third house isn't really a super dramatic or personal house, you know? And so, but this is a time where you could come to a lot of realizations. You could come to a lot of revelations about certain things, about certain fears, 
um, about how you express yourself, how you present yourself. You could come to, you know, have a lot of news, information, conversation that is coming up. And you also may have been reflecting a lot, you know, over the last six months on how you come off, how you communicate, the environments that you surround yourself with, the people, places, and things that you surround yourself with, and how some of those may be karmic or maybe fear-based, etc. And so um, those are some other things that you could see coming up at this time, but you're really learning how to uh, let go of being very intimidating, I feel, for some of you, um, especially in terms of the way that you speak or come across to other people um, in some way. And this could somehow tie into your career with Mars in the 10th house, you know, and Mars rules the solar eclipse. So this is like a new blank slate starting with your environment and also, you know, where you're headed, the conversations that you're having and uh, your day-to-day -day life in some way, right? Um, for some people, it's going to be moving locations or uh, changing work environments or changing jobs or something like that. You know, this could be like a big change like that. And with Mars being in your 10th house of career and your uh, long-term goals and achievements, etc., those traits can definitely be coming up around this time too. So it's like a lot of speaking and communication and information in day-to-day -day environment, etc., and career that's really coming up here. So, um, but this is definitely a massive new blank slate starting here with something in your life. And you're, you know, maybe changing the direction that you wanna go in and how you're going about it on a day-to-day -day basis is really what I see here for Virgo. So let me know down below, uh, Virgo, if that resonates as always, I'd really love to hear your feedback. And if you didn't watch the beginning of this video, go back and watch it because it was very powerful and you definitely don't wanna miss it. So moving on to Libra Risings, last but not least, this solar eclipse is happening in your second house of your income, finances, priorities, what's important to you, what you hold dear to you. This is really facing a massive new karmic beginning in terms of where you may feel lack in your life or powerlessness or fear in terms of finances, your priorities or what's important to you. You know, this could be really harmonizing some of those fears and, you know, really moving forward with them because Venus is in the mix in this too. And maybe you've been making some of these things mean something about who you are as a person, you know, or affect who you are as a person since Venus is your chart ruler. And so this is a, an amazing time to find beauty in some of these things that you may hold on to in terms of finances, money, income, lack, you know, things like that, you know, and, and really allowing some of them to end, allowing some of them to go. It's like breaking the change in, chains and starting anew, starting a new karmic cycle in terms of your finances, where it's like, you know what you want to create, you know where you want to go, you know the life that you want to live financially and business wise and with your investments and things like that. But it's like letting go of all this personal lack or these personal attachments or these toxic attachments that keep you from getting there, you know? And so those are the things that you could really see coming up around this time. Now, on top of that, Mars is uh, in your ninth house and Mars is the ruler of this eclipse. So this definitely could be bringing in, um, you know, new belief systems, or you could be letting go of old belief systems, uh, old world views, old views on things that have contributed to this lack or scarcity mentality with money, or this like, you know, these powerless kind of uh, theories or thoughts or attachments around money that you may have, you know, like maybe it's just like you have this like really dirty or disgusting or, you know, um, you know, viewpoint of money or something. And maybe that's what's keeping the lack going in your life in some way, or that's been something that's really come up these last six months, you know, that you've been facing, or maybe you have these certain fears around money or stability, security, etc., that you're facing, right? And so this is really changing your viewpoint, your vision, your perception, your perspective on these things uh, with this solar eclipse. And it's like starting this really major profound new beginning in this area. So let me know what happens down below Libra and let me know if this ends up resonating. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I truly, truly, truly appreciate your support from the bottom of my heart and soul. And I will see you guys in the next one.